It's all you, Nick. It's all you. Okay, so week four done. Tick. And um, over the peak of the block, downhill from here towards the race. Um, yeah, it was really nice to get through the bigger session of the block. Saturday's 3 by 10 k session, um, so 30 k's worth of volume, 40 k run in total. Um, quite a nice confidence booster because for the 30 k's, um, I actually managed to average sub 220 pace um, overall. Had I continued for another 2.2 k's on top of that longer run, I would have done a 226 marathon. Um, so yeah, all, all some nice confidence boosters for the big day, but hopefully I feel like that and then everything comes together um, on civil race day. Um, a few things to note for that session. I think, you know what, I've done it a few times before and I find that the first 10k set is actually the hardest for me, even though it's slower than marathon pace. Um, I find that, you know, I'm relaxed, I don't have that adrenaline and I kind of switch off yet. It still feels like, like quite a fast pace. Um, but once you dial it in, once you get that first 10k out the way, the rest seems to, to flow quite nicely, especially, you know, the closer towards the finish that, that you get. Um, another thing to note is that the elevation gain on Battersea Park, which is where I did it, is around three to four meters per lap. A lap is uh, 2.79 kilometers. So it's just over a meter elevation gain per kilometer. However, Seville Marathon um, is, I think you have an elevation gain of 34 meters over the 42.2k. So it's just less than a meter per kilometer. Um, so it's actually even flatter than Battersea Park. Interesting. <laughs> Didn't know you could get flatter. And you'll see in this week, I cover off a lot of my nutrition, um, what I eat in a day, the fueling before a longer run like that, um, as well as chatting to my team nutritionist, Aaron. He gives a lot of good nutritional advice. So I hope there's lots you can take from that. Um, and then lastly, I know at the beginning of the series, I said, you know what, to find those missing seconds, um, I'm going to also incorporate a bit of cross training of which I haven't done any cross training. Um, and the reason why is because I feel like things are clicking running wise. I feel like I'm in a good groove. Um, I'm feeling strong, so I'm just going with it. Uh, this week, however, I'm gonna try and put some time aside to, to do a bit of cross training, maybe in the form of swimming. Um, another thing to note is that I haven't done really much weighted strength session throughout this eight week block. Um, I do body weight stuff pretty much every day. Um, but I know before this block, I was doing a lot of strength work, loading work. Um, and outside of this block, I will. I just feel like with these big weeks and the big volume going through my legs, um, it might just upset my, my rhythm and, and throw me off a little bit. But yeah, Daniel from here. Um, once again, if you have any questions, then just pop them in the comments below. Enjoy. New start, new week, new opportunities. Um, yeah, massive milestone hits over the weekend. Best Athletics hit 300 members. So yeah, just so incredible to see, so proud to be a part of. And um, yeah, this week we pretty much reset the mileage clock. We go again. Um, nothing fancy about today's run, just the standard Monday loop. Um, I'm focusing a lot on nutrition this week uh, and insights into my nutrition. So I woke up this morning, had an espresso coffee, had an electrolyte hydration tablet, always every day, that's how I start my day. Um, and then I had two scoops of science and sports, the electrolyte go. Um, and that's it, so no food. I'm gonna finish off now with um, 10 jump squats, 10 jump lunges, and 10 explosive calf raises, um, and then get that protein shake uh, within half an hour. Well, pretty much as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, pretty much today's run's all about a rejuvenation. So um, it's a zone two run. Uh, I wouldn't call it a super easy run, but it does feel comfortable. I can speak the whole time, and I'm holding form, basically setting my mind for the week ahead. Getting the head in the game for the track session tomorrow. Track Tuesday today. Uh, today's session is pretty much going to be the biggest track session of the block. Normally I would do around 15 k's volume or 46 minutes. Today is 48 minutes, so not much more. Um, but yeah, next week Wednesday I've committed to a midweek 10k race. Um, so I will most likely not do, do track then. And the week after we're getting very close to marathon. Uh, that would be two and a half weeks to go. So a ready volume from then would drop down a bit. So I just thought it's uh, perfect for today. The session is six, four, six. So six times four minutes, four times three minutes, six times two minutes, uh, all one minute jog recovery. So shorter jog recoveries. It's um, the temperatures minus four this morning, real fuel minus four as well. Got the snow gloves out and um, yeah, probably Pretty good running conditions actually for a track session, um, but yeah, time to focus and dial it in. Boom, another session closer. Uh, before I tell you about the session, check out this ice, ice baby. 
uh, much rather prefer running in icy cold weather as long as it's not slippery versus the rain and wind I've had to deal with last week um, but yeah today's session um, much more disciplined than last week I realized you know what getting uh, tips from the King Kipchoge himself he only pushes to around 90% in these sessions um, very seldom does he go you know 95 and over and um, I realized last week that I was getting a bit carried away I was pushing a bit too hard um, it was good sessions but I need to be a little bit more disciplined so yeah I'll hold it back a tiny bit like hoping to to just save the fireworks for race day um, felt a lot more within myself and uh, hopefully a lot more productive that way as well so today I'm gonna film uh, what I consume in a day uh, so started the day always every day with a science and sports electrolyte hydration tablet um, followed by an espresso coffee to just bring me to life um, and it's now breakfast time, so <clears throat> um, I have three variations. Um, one of my goals for the block was not to, to binge too much on cereal. Uh, I used to have six variations, so the three variations, the first of which is um, mango and kiwi. Um, I'll leave the skin on a kiwi. Let me know if you think that's weird. <laughs> I'm just all about efficiency. It tastes the same for me, and um, if I can save time peeling a kiwi, it means I can run a bit more. Um, and then some... Greek style natural yogurt uh, with some Scottish oats. So that's variation number one. Number two um, is yogurt, oats, and then peanut butter um, with a drizzle of honey on top. You know, I love my peanut butter. Um, and then number three, the last one, um, is some granola with strawberry flavored in there. So that's breakfast. I haven't gone for a run yet today. I'm taking a corporate run at around lunchtime. Um, so yeah, this is just good fuel for, for pre-run. So I'm in central London today, um, took a corporate for a run, so I so got them out the office for a little bit. Nice way to spend a lunch break. Um, yeah, brought back some memories of when I was a banker not so long ago, uh, under three years ago. And every sort of like lunch break or opportunity over lunchtime, I'd zip out for a, a quick run along the river and, and back at my desk and have lunch at my desk. But yeah, if that was you or is you, Please let me know. Fewer things beat London on a beautiful sunny day. Um, yeah, on full display. Check it out. Okay, so corporate run done and it's lunchtime. Um, so today I'm going to have tuna salad wraps. Probably one of my, my go-to lunches. Um, so pretty much baby spinach, tomato, cucumber, a tin of tuna, um, some hummus, all in a wrap with a bit of cheese and uh, the wraps are whole wheat wraps. Can't go wrong. Busy, busy day, uh, but we survived it nonetheless and it was a nice productive day. So it's dinner time and um, yeah, tonight I'm having a salmon mix for dinner. Um, one of our go-to dinners, we, we're pretty boring tend to eat a lot of the, the same stuff every week. So this is like one of our weekly meals. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, just a great way to get veggies in. Um, there's, you know, beans, mushrooms, and then the salmon for uh, just some really good protein as well. So yeah, my secret ingredients, I'll, I'll, I'll put some salt, pepper, and cheese, but I love my chili sauce. Um, so Mr. Naga is one of my favorites. It's like super, super, super hot, um, but I just have little portions because I'm obviously running pretty far in the morning, so don't want to overdo it. Oh, guys, Thursday's almost done on the way home. I've got Reese in the background there. <laughs> KO. How are you feeling? Oh, I think I'm absolutely KO'd this morning. Yeah, gone. <laughs> but yeah, nice. it's all about marathon training's hard, so yeah, this is a hard session for me. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> Do you know what? Reese is in the best shape he's ever been in, but like I said, we're 25 k's into the run, 5 k's home. We peak of marathon training. It's one month to go, Reese. <laughs> Happy one month to go. And uh, that's all, that's what it's about, pretty much, you know. Uh, I, I can feel it in my legs as well, catching up. You know what? On the way home, we've had a little bit of a breather here. Look at that. Appreciating the finer things in life. Today was a heel sprint session. And, um, you know, off the back of a 100 mile week, today I'm following it up with another 100 mile week. It's like starting up a truck, guys. Um, it takes around, you know, we did 12 reps. It takes six reps just to get firing. 
but um, why I decided to go with heel spins today um, for two reasons one to keep the sharpness there and two because it doesn't stay in your legs for too long um, I've got a the bigger session of the block on Saturday so exactly two days from now and um, I feel like you recover so much quicker from from heel stuff so yeah tempo has been the main focus on Thursdays but you know changing it up with a, a cheeky heel sprint in between every now and then is such a good thing so another session in the bag Reese. Five k's to slog at home. Oh, just get me home. <laughs> Come on, mind over matter. Let's go. So today I'm joined by my nutritionist, Aaron from Conscious Performance Nutrition. Um, I got in touch with Aaron probably about a year ago. Um, the reason being is I was waking up in the morning um, feeling relatively weak, feeling sluggish, feeling like I was just lacking something. Um, and then Aaron came into my life. Um, thank you so much for, for everything you've done so far. It's made such a big difference. Obviously, nutrition is a crucial part to, to training, running, and improving. Um, and what we did, we did it was a series of blood tests. We realized, you know, certain things I was lacking. I added those into my diet. Um, and since then, I've been, been feeling so much, you know, stronger and uh, been able to perform. I think, you know, proof is in the pudding with, with the results. I think we've improved, um, what, four minutes over the marathon in the last year, which is great. So so a lot of that um, is down to your help. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, just super excited to, to chat to you today. I think there's a lot you can offer um, runners out there. I'll link his, his details in the description below um, if you'd like to get in touch with him. But yeah, I can honestly say that, you know, I've benefited a lot from the advice and, and stuff you've given me. And um, and it's, it's just a reminder how crucial nutrition is to to training and improving. Um, so Aaron, thanks for, for joining uh, me today. And um, I've got probably, you know, some of the most common questions um, that I get asked nutrition wise by runners. Um, I tend to answer them myself, but I'm really keen to to get your thoughts from a, a professional nutritionist side of things. Um, so yeah, the first of which is um, what is the uh, ideal carb intake? Um, so how much, how many carbs or how much carbs should you take on in a marathon, um, as well as what's the best way. So I know a lot of runners out there struggle with certain gels. Uh, would you say a combination of gel, drink mix, um, and how much do you recommend throughout a race? Yeah, look, first up, thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, it's a very common question that I often get, and it's an area that most runners tend to struggle with starting off because there's so much options and varieties. But when it comes to carbohydrate intake, we need to look at an hourly target first. So we always break it down to grams per hour to consume. That's where we start. For most runners, when they're starting off, we suggest starting with 60 grams per hour. And then the more advanced or more time you have training your gut with that, we recommend that you actually start pushing that from 60 grams up to 90. And it's a case of some runners pushing it towards 120 grams per hour. So I suppose to sum up, start off with 60 grams an hour and try and get as high as you can towards that 120 mark, making sure that obviously your stomach and GI issues don't happen during your training and event. When it comes to fuel, personally, I like to recommend what's called a 30-30-30 principle. So 30% 30 of your carbs come from a liquid source, 30% of your carbs come from a gel source, and 30% of your carbs come from a solid, solid source. So that could be something like a carb drink, it could be a carb gel, and maybe then it could be fruit, it could be carbohydrate bars. There's lots of different varieties you have there. And the idea and the methodology behind this is, is to try and stop the stomach getting overloaded from one particular fuel source and preventing those GI issues like nausea, bloating, vomiting, maybe diarrhea in some cases. Now, in the case where some of those foods might irritate the individual, so some individuals are quite sensitive to gels, they mightn't be able to actually consume them in high concentrations. We recommend then a, a technique called carbohydrate mouth rinse. So they remove gels from the diet, they stick with maybe solid fuels, stick with carbohydrate drinks, and if they are quite sensitive and they do generally have stomach upset some way, shape or form during a marathon, especially kind of towards the end when stress is high in the body, we actually recommend they go to a carbohydrate mouth rinse strategy. And what that means is you have your carbohydrate drink, you take a big mouthful in, gurgle it like mouthwash for 10 to 15 seconds, but you spit it back out. And the science has shown that getting the carbohydrate in tricks the sensors in your taste buds in your mouth, tells the brain, yes, we have sugar coming our way, we have fuel coming our way. The brain tells the stomach and we actually get this temporary boost in performance. And that can last anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the athlete. And the idea then is because we spit the fuel out, we're not getting the fuel into our stomach. So we're avoiding bloating, we're avoiding giving ourselves heartburn, we're avoiding putting fuel into the stomach is already upset. So we can do this multiple times across a race. For most runners, you'd recommend them doing it towards the end of a race because depending on the person, they might only get three or four goals out of it. Some might be able to do it for eight or nine times, but that's quite personal. But that's a, a good strategy to start with. If someone can't handle it, go with your mouth rinse. 
Amazing. Cool. Thank you so much. I know it's such a cool little trick that goes a long way. I know when you when you watch a lot of the elites and professionals, uh, a lot of them tend to to swish it around their mouth, spit it out. I never understood um, until we spoke and, and I tend to do the same, especially towards the latter part of a race where your stomach doesn't feel like stomaching things, but you know you need that extra little boost. So small trick that goes a long way. Thank you so much for that. Um, okay. On to the next question. Um, one that I get asked fairly regularly as well around fasted running. Um, so people often, you know, recommend is fasted running running a good thing to do. Um, in, in my case, I do a lot of um, my easy morning runs. I do them fasted um, for two reasons. One is to save time in the morning. Um, but the second reason is I actually do find that I do get a lot of benefits from fasted running. I think, you know, over the years, my body has learned to uh, adapt to utilize fat as a source of energy from this. Um, I've also found that, you know, it helps me get a little bit leaner, um, which is great, you know, closer to race day. Um, but at the same time, Whenever I do a bigger session, like a big track or interval session um, or a longer run, then I definitely need fuel before the sessions. So yeah, very keen to get your thoughts on, on fasted running. Yeah, 100%. And to be honest, you've hit the nail on the head there with how you should do fasted running. So it's an area, again, a lot of runners get confused with in terms of when should I do it and what types of training intensities. So the, the rule of thumb of fast running is it's for your lower intensity run. So anything kind of from zone two, maybe low end of zone three. So stuff that wouldn't be considered too intense for you is a good time to do your fasted training. And the main aim for doing this is to improve what's called your fat max. So your fat max is your ability to use fuels at a higher intensity. And as endurance runners, we want to be able to use fats at higher intensities as much as we can because we have loads of fat stores in our body. Obviously for athletes, it's lower than general pop, but there is quite a lot of calories there. And there's other issues that we have with fat as a fuel. So it actually can be metabolized and broken down and removed from the body at the same rate it's used so it doesn't cause the likes of that intense burning sensation it doesn't cause you know links to cramping it's a little bit more of an efficient fuel so we want to improve our fat max and a great way of doing that is fasted training ideally you'd want to do it in the morning normally when we recommend doing fasted training there should be at least 12 hours of a fast so make sure you have 12 hours from when you start that training session to your last meal the night before and that's to make sure your glycogen stores your carb stores your muscles and liver are depleted and then when you go out and do your fasted run, the body actually has to start tapping into your fat stores, breaking that fuel down, using it then as a fuel in your session. And then again, using this kind of training method consistently over months will actually improve your body's ability to break down fat, use it, and then actually fuel that session. So ideally, low intensity sessions in the morning if you can. And likewise, if you're doing that and it's intense intervals, track sessions, and it's on three or above, again, go back to fueling with the right fuels for that. So fasted is for low intensity. 12 hour fast is needed and ideally in the morning. Amazing. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying that. that. Um, so on to, on to the next question, the last question. Um, so we're in race week now and um, it's time to get the carb loading game on. Um, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of carb loading. It's worked well for me in the past. Um, so yeah, I want to find out, you know, what's sort of the best way to carb load, how far out from the race should you carb load? And uh, are there any sort of foods you should avoid when you carb load i know you know personally um i tend to have a, a reduced calorie diet in the first um half of the week um and then have an increased calorie and carb diet say three days out from the marathon um i tend to carb load with uh you know good carbs like sweet potatoes whole wheat pasta brown rice um whole wheat bread all of that sort of stuff and i find that you know it really has worked for me in the past i feel super strong at the start line um but yeah once again very very keen to get your your thoughts on all of that yeah so when it comes to carbohydrate loading the common thing we tend to see is runners will tackle it the night before the race so for argument's sake they're racing sunday morning saturday night is when they focus on and have huge dinners loads of carbohydrates and, and they throw everything on the plate that tastes nice and sweet and sugary which is not ideal because it plays a lot of stress in your gut so yeah what you're doing there is what's called a super compensation model so you're actually going three days out from your race so if your race is on a sunday morning for argument's sake you would actually start your carb loading that thursday morning and the idea is we have an incremental increase in carbohydrates across the three days so normally what i say rule of thumb is if you want to use hand portions as a guide we use our cupped hand as one portion of carbohydrates we normally say get two extra portions in on Thursday, so three days out. When you're on the Friday, which is two days out, we want you to get four extra portions of carbohydrates in. And in the day before, so on the Saturday in that example, we want to get six extra portions of carbohydrates in. And likewise, go with food sources that are easy digestible, easy to get in, and are natural and not processed. So your sweet potatoes, brown rice is perfect, your pastas. Again, whole fruit, fresh fruit, even dried fruit. Just be careful, dried fruit doesn't have additive preserves and sugars and stuff because that can irritate the gut. When it comes to avoiding foods, 
that can actually impact your gut. What I would say, just a quick, easy answer is listen to your stomach, listen to your gut. If there's any foods you know that irritate you, like the bloat you or cause a little bit of heartburn or nausea, just avoid them on race week. So if you know alcohol causes problems, stay away from that. If you know eating loads of pasta for you, bloat you, then find another source. Go for sweet potatoes or go for rice. So I would say is if there's any foods you know that can irritate you a little, avoid them like the plague on race week. Another quick, another quick point to make as well is some athletes I recommend just to make sure that someone can handle the fuels on race days. If you're going to use supplements or use foods during your race on race day, have them across the three days leading up to your race. So if you're going to use gels or carb drinks or solid blocks or foods, whatever it is, have them in your diet for three days leading up. And the idea of this is it's called assimilation. So we're giving the body a chance to adapt to getting those fuels in. Because a lot of times athletes will only take those gels or drinks when they compete and there could be weeks or months in between and the body doesn't know how to adapt to it. So bring your supplements into your carb loading as well. Great. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, good to chat to you once again. Super insightful. And uh, you've helped me a lot. So hopefully, you know, this little taster will help a lot of runners out there. Um, like I said, I'll put your details in the in the description below. And um, yeah, if you're feeling kind, maybe you can throw in a, a cheeky discount code. A lot of us runners have got races coming up. So so that would help. But thanks once again. Um, great chatting to you. And um, yeah, if anyone's got any further questions, please feel free to, to pop them in the comments below and I'm, I'll, I'll get Aaron to, to answer them. Perfect. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Hopefully I can answer some of your questions, guys. Take it easy. Okay, so it was very early in the morning and I didn't want to wake the house up, but now I can talk. So that right there is my carb loading drink, 47 grams per serving, of which I have just more than two servings. So around 100 grams of carbs there, followed by three Beautiful gels throughout the run. So 40 each, um, coming to 120 plus 100, so 220 grams of carbs for the session, um, followed off by protein recovery as well as collagen powder. I aim to get in about 25 grams worth of recovery protein after harder sessions. Okay, so today's four weeks out and um, a time where I like doing my biggest session of the block. Um, it's three by 10K day today, uh, 40K run, 30Ks worth of volume. And um, yeah, you know what? Today is about working hard, but once again, we want to save that extra little bit for race day. Um, so I don't want to get too carried away. I think, you know what? Last week was on a very undulating route. Oh, there's a bit of life out here. Um, last week was on a very undulating route, so split times didn't matter too much. Some were a lot quicker than marathon pace, some were a lot slower. Today I've come to Battersea Park, um, so it's a lot more consistent. And um, so I'm going to be targeting sort of like goal marathon pace is 318. Um, for Berlin it was 319, but I'd like to target 318 to, to try and, and be safe and crack that, that sub 220. Um, so my first 10k set's going to be at around 323 per k. Um, the next one's 320 per k. And then the last one, 317 per K. So the last uh, 10K set, a little bit faster than marathon pace. That's the broader plan. Let's see how it plays out. Um, yeah, it's currently zero degrees. I think on race day in civil, it's normally between, I don't know, 12 to 16. Yeah, guys, once again, um, just such a great week. Solid week in the bag. I cannot ask for more in this training block. I just hope it all comes together on race day because that's what it's all for. Um, my hands were far too cold to get this little guy going. So yeah, there's no running footage, but at the same time, um, you've seen me run enough and it at least it allowed me to, to really get into the zone, really concentrate. Um, I've just tried to focus a lot more this block. And um, yeah, some big takeaways is that I really did set the mind for the last 10. So the last 10 is where it truly counts. The mind is set. Um, the stomach could, could handle three beta fuel gels, um, which is great because, you know, having 40 grams carbs, they're quite thick. So it is, it is slightly risky business, but that feels pretty good. And, um, yeah, Reese over here. How was it? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I would do it again. Next block. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Awesome. Yeah. It's the first time I've given him the session. So he absolutely nailed it as well. Um, once again, you know, the legs felt heavy towards the end. Um, you know, back to back hundred mile weeks. So it's exactly what I expect them to feel like. I feel like I could definitely find an extra gear. I don't feel absolutely cooked. I think last time I've done the session, you know, I did push it a little bit too hard and, and get a bit carried away. So yeah, hopefully I feel like this in four weeks time. Um, so that's pretty much covers a lot of my nutrition off in the week. And um, 
four weeks to go more of the same um, and then you know two weeks taper let's go